Hey, hey, lovely people. Today, I want to show you how I like to do the no risk for the wicked heist, solo, stealth, on overkill difficulty. Before we go into the actual heist, let's take a quick look on the loadout. Uh, the loadout I like to use uh, in solo stealth is just uh, the car 4 and the signature 403 pistol. They are both silenced, but that doesn't really matter. What is kind of important is I like to use the motion sensor, which is just really good when you're doing uh, solo stealth, because you can plant it on guards and they will always be marked. For the skills, I like to use uh, Infiltrator, which is good for uh, gaining or refreshing rush. I also like to use Quick Fingers, that will help us a lot when we are pick-locking pick both doors, but also the, uh, the safe deposits. And Bagger is just nice to back a little faster. Swift for more movement speed. Escapist, just to gain rush in another way. You can sprint to gain rush. Manipulator and Overbearing just helps you with intimidating and keeping uh, civilians down, which will also be useful and come in clutch in this run. Um, some of the Grifter skills are really good. I, I've got all of them because they are just really nice. Uh, they will just, in general, help us. Um, also, especially social engineering will help us, uh, making sure that civilians won't spot us when we're doing illegal stuff. Um, all of the hacker skills I have, they are just really useful. Uh, you can hack cameras, which is really good for looping and making sure that you can have at least one camera that doesn't spot you. You also have the skill where you can hack the phone or the radio on a guard, which will give you five seconds to walk past them. It will just save us some time so we don't have to wait all the time for the guards. I also have signal catch, but that doesn't really matter. We're not going to be paging at all. Strategist is really nice. It makes us able to spot one extra guard and CQC specialist is just another one. We're not going to use it, but I have it. All right, so let's get into the actual heist. The first thing I do is I take a notice of where the van is so we know where we want to escape with all of the money. I have a bit of a ritual. I, whenever there are uh, window covers, I like to go in and cover them. It's not really necessary for this heist, although it is pretty nice to do it here at the last window where I cover up the windows because there will be a guard out in the parking lot and also some Sith walking by and they can spot you when you are moving bags away from the vault. Next, we are going into the parking lot so we can unlock the door for the back entrance. And while we're out here, we will also plant a motion sensor on the guard out here that will help us when we start moving bags from this uh, utility room uh, out to the van. Luckily, this guard who is downstairs, he had the red key card, which we need in order to progress the heist. There will always be one guard downstairs who has a key card and one guard upstairs on uh, the second floor who will have a key card. And it's random if they have the red or blue key card downstairs or upstairs. So we were very lucky. That makes things a little faster. And so we just follow the guard because we are not done down here at the ground floor. Next thing is we need to get the QR code, but we also have to take notice if the uh, power switch is downstairs, which it is in this case. We quickly hack the guard, grab some rush from the civilian, and we just take care of the power. So now that's done. We still don't have the QR code. It wasn't in the uh, IT uh, help desk room, which we're in currently. So we need to go and look in the manager office and the, I don't even know, conference room. While we sit and wait, I want to locate where the server room or the IT room is. And it's on the second floor right there. So now we know where we have to go once we've grabbed the QR code. I quickly grab some rush so that the civilians won't spot me while I'm doing something illegal. And yeah, you can look in through the window and see if the phone is in the manager's office, which it wasn't, but I like to unlock the door anyways, just, you know, just to have it. Guard. So now we have the QR code and we can progress upstairs. What I'm doing here is I'm just kind of listening because there is a lead guard who really enjoys walking these stairs up and down. So I'm just kind of listening and trying to locate where he is. Currently, he's not in the staircase, so I just progress to unlock the door with the QR code. Now that's done. I see I have a guard right there. 
And I'm pretty sure when I was playing, I noticed that, oh, I could kind of hear the lead guard coming. So I run in and I hide behind the soda dispenser. And I quickly hack the camera so we don't have to worry about getting spotted by that. And I'm just, you know, watching the guard who is on the right uh, while I'm trying to locate where the lead guard is. I didn't manage to locate the lead guard on the cam, but I did hear him right here and noticed that he was walking downstairs in a second. And that's when I decided that, you know, we want to plant a motion sensor on him as quickly as possible, because that's just really crucial to making this heist a lot easier. The lead guard is definitely the, the one variable which can fuck everything up. So now the lead guard will be spotted at all times, which is really nice. I grab some rush, I open the door to the server room, and we do the hack. In this instance, I get the white color, which I write down. I don't actually have to do that because I'm playing solo and no one else will need it, but it's just a good, I guess, habit to have in case you're playing with others. So I like to do it. Also, maybe I get distracted by something and forget it. So then I have it at all times. After waiting a bit, the guard who is patrolling this area will leave and we can proceed downstairs. There's someone there. Sometimes I like to grab uh, the bank executive already now. But in this case, I just decided to go downstairs uh, in order to disable the power grid for the door. And then the game will also mark uh, bank executive. So if you're not very used to doing this heist uh, in stealth, it's very helpful just to do the actual objective that the game gives you. They should be reasonably easy to identify. Just look for the fancy looking employees. So the next step is grabbing the bank executive and as you can see he's walking to the room here which is the best place to spot him. This is interesting. An executive from the Wix I just run out quickly to see where the guard patrol in this area is and he's coming so I know I have to be a bit careful. But yeah this room is definitely the best place to grab a bank executive. And I'm just kind of, I'm kind of watching, and I decided to mask up here. Um, almost got spotted by the other bank executive. So right now I'm just playing it real cool, Watch the keeping track on the guard. And luckily for me, the bank executive decided to walk around the right of the copy machine, so I could grab him easily. So now it's a question of waiting for the right moment to transport or to, uh, I guess drag the bank executive downstairs to the uh, eye scanner. So we're just going to be sitting here waiting a bit. I'm speeding it up. And that guard is leaving, so now we can do it. And unfortunately, sometimes when you're doing this, you have to walk past this window. And if you're very unlucky, you will be spotted by the civilians. And I almost messed up the entire uh, heist Get the uh, on this down. round. So if this happens, don't panic. Underneath. I was panicking, but you shouldn't do it. Just make sure that you grab all of the sifts and you get them in a nice corner where they won't be spotted by the guard who is patrolling upstairs. There are a sky window, which they will spot civilians if you don't put them correctly in here. So we put them in this corner. This is the safest place to have them. They won't get spotted from a skylight or from the guard patrolling outside. You won't see them through the window. And this is where I really messed up. So I I thought that I was totally fine with not tying up the first bank executive in the copy room. But as you might notice, he actually starts to leave right now. You will see it right there on the right. You saw him. He's walking away. And that kind of caught me off guard. I thought he was still in here. So <laughs> I'm getting <laughs> kind of confused here. And I start rushing after him. This I was very lucky here. Um, but I managed to grab him. And I guess he was just really eager to go down and open the vault for me. Guard over there. 
this could have ended up really badly um, if the lead guard had been downstairs. This uh, this run would have been over. But we were lucky, and we managed to save it. Guard. So now we can just slowly walk towards the vault, so the bank executive can open the vault for us. Almost got spotted by that cam there. You have to be careful about that. That is probably the most important cam to hack. You could probably do this heist without hacking that, but I, that would make it really hard. You would have to be very fast with everything you're doing. All right, after he has done that, we want to hide him somewhere. And the best place is actually right here in this corner. The guard who's patrolling outside here, he won't notice him even when he's looking inside the vault area. Uh, he doesn't get an angle to spot him. You might be inclined to put him in the room I was just sitting in, the uh, utility room next to the vault area. And you can do that, but you are risking that a sieve will spot you in there. Uh, depending on what uh, RNG you get, sometimes you will have uh, sieves who are walking into that room every once in a while. So I like to put him there in that corner because that's the safest place. No sieves or guards will spot him there. So now we're just waiting so we can get over to the computer and send a login request. And this is where I mess up a second time. Uh, I do the hack or whatever and I, I, I just forgot to send the request. So you'll see me do the interaction here and I just kind of leave. <laughs> Don't do what I just did. Make sure that you both do the hack and afterwards also interact so you actually get the, the passwords or the pin codes. I'm just speeding things up because in my mind everything is going according to plan. And then we get into the vault and I realize my mistake. Yeah, what a dumbass. Alright, well, we'll speed this up again. So we'll just go upstairs and interact with it now instead. Luckily for me, the timing was pretty good. The lead guard was already walking right past that area, so we have plenty of time to go in, interact, and go downstairs. Unfortunately for me, the lead guard decided to go downstairs, so I had to wait for him. Technically, you could walk right past him, but when I'm this far into the run, this is probably 10 or 15 minutes into the run, I don't want to risk it. So, might as well just wait for him to walk upstairs. And since he's continuously being spotted, we don't have to guess when he's leaving. We can just read it and and, and do a calculated move. So yeah, we walk downstairs, we have the guard there. Perfect. So now we can get into the vault. In this instance, the code was 0122. And we're in the vault. The first thing I like to do is open all of the bank deposit boxes. Uh, I'm gonna speed that up because that is really boring. Luckily for Payday 3, they made it less painful than in Payday 2. Took a lot more time pick logging everything in Payday 2. Um, but even still, it, it still takes a good couple of minutes. Um, this is where the skill that refreshes Rush and instant uh, unlocks whenever you successfully do the minigame is really useful. So definitely grab that for this heist. <laughs> Alright, so now we backed up everything from the deposit boxes. I'm just, for a safety reason, going out to check if there's a guard nearby. Um, I'm not sure if the die packs exploding will alert a guard if something is wrong. Uh, I just like to make sure, just for safety reasons, that he's not there. And we are then disarming all of the die packs. It's impossible to disarm all of them in solo at the moment. The best you can do is actually just having one of them explode, which I got here, and I think it's the first time I managed to do that. So I felt really nice about that. Alright, so now it's time to back up everything. And then I like to hide all of the bags behind the vault door. Um, if you are not being careful and you run around in here, you will sometimes have a guard walk to the door and look in. So just make sure that you're hiding everything behind the vault door. Then usually, if a guard walks in to check out what's going on, he won't notice anything. Guard over there. So now the next thing we want to do is move all of the bags into this utility room. I like to put them on top There's of that guard. closet. You can not just put them in the corner at the closets. But you really have to be careful because when the guard, the guard is walking towards a vault room, there, he will have a small 
angle where he can spot things uh, inside of the utility room. What you also just noticed me doing there is I'm going to use the bots to help me carry all of the money to the van. So I just, I only had two bags at this point, so I only gave one of them to chains. And I did an unnecessary hack on that guard. Didn't have to do that at all. And yeah, you just have to walk all the way around, be careful of the sieves. And then you can just transport the things into the van. The bots are a bit slow, but they will eventually follow you over to the van, so you can grab the bags and put them in the van. The chains obviously decided to go the long way to make it more annoying for me. So now we just have to get back inside and continue on moving bags from the wall to the utility area. I just sped the Photoshop there because I had some recording issues. Guard. At this point I was kind of curious because this guard has been standing there for quite a while. And I th actually thought he was bugged out, but he wasn't. He's, he starts moving in a second. I did an unnecessary hack there. No reason to do that. Actually, uh, it almost uh, messed me up when I went back into the vault area. Because in a second you'll see that I almost get spotted by it. Because I forgot. But uh, we just hack that and we're good again. So, we just get back to moving bags. You may notice that I'm walking instead of running, and technically you could run, but you have to be really careful with that, because you both have the guard inside the area who will patrol to the vault entrance that I'm using, but you also have the guard outside in the parking lot, and if he's pretty close, he will hear you run. And we really don't want him to go in and check what's going on, because he'll probably spot the bags in the utility room. I like to keep it safe, I just walk. Guard over there. It's a guard. I think I managed to move four bags in total in this go before the guard is guard coming back to the walled area. He kind of spots me there. Don't panic, just crouch and uh, get into cover. And yeah, I uh, give some more backs to the bots. Quickly give Dallas one as well. The guard is coming back, so we just keep it cool and get in cover. And we just wait a little. Now at this point, I, I prioritize moving bags from the vault into the utility room because the guard in the parking Watch lot the is a bit more forgiving with the way he patrols. You will have more openings for moving bags than with the guy inside of this area. So when I noticed that the guard inside here was moving away, I decided, okay, I need to move more bags from the vault just to make it easier for me. And I still put them on top of the closet. Just to make sure that there's no angle for that stupid guard. And now we're only missing one bag. Very nice. So far, it's been going really well with just moving these bags. Now, the broken money bag, I always bring out last. Just because if you have to make a run for it, you, you want to bring the good stuff. Uh, obviously, the destroyed money will uh, give you less money. Yeah, and the guard out in the parking lot is quite far away. I spot the guard outside in the back alley. You have to watch out for him. Sometimes he'll be standing really close to the fence and he will spot you if you run out. So just watch out for that. In this run though, he's not an issue at all. He doesn't have a patrol path that get, gets him to the fence. And I'm just That's waiting four. for the slow butts to bring me the bags. Nice. That's five. Six bags and counting. 
At this point, the heist is pretty much over. As long as you don't rush it and you just take things real nice and slow, there shouldn't be an issue. Four packs left. And there you see, that's a brilliant example of that god out there having a small angle to spot things. But yeah, we have four packs left and we have, we have four people, so it's just about giving everyone a bag of money. I want to show you something really, really interesting as well. You have to be very careful when you're giving the bags to a, um, a bot. Because if you throw it in a bad angle, uh, it sometimes will bounce off uh, surfaces and then they won't grab it. And if a guard is nearby or a civilian, then they will spot it. I actually don't know if civilians will spot uh, bags, but a guard definitely will. So be careful with that. Make sure that you have a nice, clear throwing path for uh, handing off the bags. And yeah, now the heist is pretty much over. over we can just get over to the van and drop in the last bit of loot. That's seven. We have what we came for. Yeah, take Under your time, guys. No rush at all. Follow me. Follow me. Piece of shit drill. Yeah, I, I got a bit confused there. I thought a bag just despawned, and I was like, where the hell is the last bag? And apparently Hoxton somehow managed to grab one of the bags when I threw it before. But I, I'm a bit confused here. I'm like, mm, is it gonna respawn, or what's going on? Because he's leaning up against the wall, I couldn't see it. But at some point, yes, there it is, I noticed it. And we threw it in the van, and we did it! We got all of the bags on overkill difficulty, stealth, with no kills. We didn't kill anybody. And we also did it in a very reasonable time, 24 minutes. So yeah, that's not too bad. It's a bit tricky the first couple of times you do the heist, but once you've kind of done it a couple of times, I'd say it's a very simple heist and it's it's pretty, it's, it's a good first heist to do stealth in. But yeah, I hope that was helpful. If it was, please drop a like subscribe. There will be more content both in Payday 3 but also other stuff. Other than that, thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time. And until then, goodbye.